All right, hi everybody. Welcome back to Addiction, Alcoholism, and the Three Principles. Uh, today we are joined by Lucy Sheffield, who's going to share with us her uh, journey with recovery with uh, this understanding of the three principles. Uh, pretty excited to have her on today to join us. Uh, Harry is actually the one that invited her, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him and I'll get the uh, Facebook Live started. Okay. Well, I, uh, Lucy wanted to do a, a uh, talks with people and she does want to do that. So anyone who's interested in talking about their journey, she wants to do something with something in, in Devon, I'm not quite sure. But we, <laughs> we talked together and I loved her energy. I just loved what, how she was so open and how she was, she was receiving the energy. It, it reminded me a lot of Greg to be honest, very similar type of enthusiasm uh, <laughs> and appreciation for what she was experiencing in, in, in the moment. And uh, uh, so I, I wanted to bring her on the show. And this show is sort of like a little bit of a case study. So we want to see how we can help and support each other in our understanding and grow in our understanding. And she's going to reveal to us a little bit of what she's going through, how she's seeing things, and how she's having fun. You know, <laughs> that's... A, no, don't tell anyone that we have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, now, I just want to read this. She just posted this, so this will give you a little background towards her. Today marks six weeks of being sober for me. I have no idea where this, where this journey is going to take me. But so far, I am loving every new opportunity that has been arising each day. And you can feel that in her. It's not just words. It was <laughs> certainly one of the hardest, bravest decisions I had to face. My alcohol demons. But I can't stress or begin to try and explain how glad I am that I took this path. I have no idea if I will continue not drinking. Each day, I decide if... if if I want to drink or not, and so far it keeps me being a no for me. But we are all different in what works for us. I am super excited to be talking as a guest on Harry and Greg's show this coming Sunday. <laughs> da, 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 da. I will be sharing my personal story and insights I've, ever, I've had since I began to question my relationship with alcohol. And with that very subtle introduction, <laughs> just, just just talk what comes to your mind Every, yeah. we'll all just share in a very comfortable natural way and yeah that's cool so like if everyone's happy with this i'll share from like harry said whatever comes to me and but if anyone wants to ask questions or jump in go for it i'm open to i like conversations so that's good um so basically probably going back eight years is when my alcohol journey started when i came across the principles um through my auntie who had discovered them about a year before and i saw a change in her and i kind of kept saying to her i want a bit of this i want a bit of this like why are you so happy and the thing for me at the time was the relationship that i was in with my partner with my ex was I drank quite a lot, quite often. And when I drank, I was mentally abusive to her. Can't remember now, it's a lot of years ago, but I wasn't very nice and I didn't want to be that person. And it looked to me like the alcohol was causing that. So I started having chats with my auntie every week and got into the principles and got some kind of understanding around how my thinking was creating my reality. Um, and I'm not sure what I saw back then, because it's quite a few years ago, but my drinking changed and I changed, I changed, that's what happened, I changed and I saw my drinking differently. I think it lessened and when I did drink, the most important thing was I stopped being horrible. I I can see that what was happening for me was I was angry at the world and I was taking out on her when I drank. And once I got an understanding of the principles, 
I began to see that the world wasn't a horrible place and that it wasn't I didn't want to be angry at the world I couldn't be angry at the world anymore I loved the world you know but nothing really shifted with my drink and I kind of it did shift but it didn't shift how to explain it it changed but gradually it creeped back in I think that's what happened and when I, I split up with the partner that I'm talking about about three and a half, four years ago now, and gradually my drinking, I only kind of noticed about a year ago that my drinking had gradually got, steadily got worse again. And it was probably in about December time when I started to kind of think, um, right, I want to do something about my drinking here. But what I what we talk about a lot, like with me, my auntie and my sister, who we, we do a lot of retreats and uh, workshops and things around the principles. And we talk about taking responsibility whilst knowing that we're not responsible. And I think I thought I understood that and I probably did in other areas and things like that. But with the drinking, it looked to me like it was all on me. I've got to do this. I need to stop drinking. It's too hard. I can't do this, 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 and this. I can't date. I can't go to a party, a wedding. Da, da, da. The list was just endless. I just couldn't do these things without drinking. It just, it just didn't look possible to me that that was going to happen. So to try and think that I had to do this, I had to stop drinking was a massive solid brick wall and something that I was just too scared to try and get over. But having talks with my auntie and my sister, we kind of have this other discussion where it's like, you know, when there's this solid wall in front of you and you can't see what's on the other side of it, that's because you're looking at it from where you are right now. Whereas when you actually kind of climb over that wall, there's something there that's better that you can't see right now. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get all that. Did I act? <laughs> Clearly I didn't. So I'm not really sure what changed for me. I got curious. We talk about that a lot as well, about getting curious. And I think looking back, I got curious as to just wanting to see something different with my relationship with alcohol. I didn't see it as I have to do this. For some reason in this moment when I started getting curious, I saw it more as what can I see here? Is there something that I can be shown here? And I had a chat with my sister about it. And like, I never really talked to anyone. I like I talked to my sister about anything. Um, but this was one of those things that no way, I'm not talking to her about my alcohol, just no way. Cause then it's real, you know, then I'm kind of admitting I've got some sort of issue or problem or I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if I'd be called an alcoholic or I don't really know how it works in the, in the um, sort of addiction world from that side of things. I'm not sure. I didn't drink every single day, but when I did drink, I drank quite a lot. Like I would drink, a couple of bottles of wine and I'd be doing that every sort of three or four days I'd probably have a break for a couple of days and then oh yeah let's go to the shop so I could see it was a habit as well I could see that getting honest with myself and admitting it to myself before I spoke to my sister was the first step and I kind of thought come on Lou you've faced a lot of things over these eight years why not just have a look at this just just don't be scared just just have a look at it that's all you that's all you're asking you know like talking to yourself in your own head <laughs> come on that's all we're asking Lulu <laughs> so from doing that came a couple of um situations where it felt to me like can I do something different here this was before I stopped drinking. It was about a week before I actually stopped drinking. And I'd gone to visit a friend and they didn't particularly drink. They perhaps had one here or there. <clears throat> and I thought, can I go out and just drink a couple of glasses of wine? 
so I did. And after that, I, <laughs> I thought, what the hell was the point in that? The reason I drink is to get pissed. <laughs> I want that feeling. And uh, it didn't give me that feeling by having two glasses of wine. So I thought that was a waste of time and money and everything. So, and then kind of during that week, I continued getting curious and I noticed that my drinking probably cut down to what, to about half of what I would have normally drank. Um, and then I found online this um, 30 day alcohol experiment from Annie Grace, her name is. And I liked that it was called an experiment because she said you couldn't fail. Even if you drank in the 30 days, you couldn't fail. It was an experiment. So it felt to me exactly like what had been going on in my head, which was the exploration of my relationship with alcohol. There wasn't all this, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, da da da. It was just an exploration. So when I read that it was an experiment, I kind of thought, well, maybe I could give this a go. But it wanted you to commit to a date. <laughs> you had to put in a date and say that that was the starting date. And I was like, yeah, no, I'll never drink tonight. <laughs> so I didn't for a couple of days. And then I did. I don't know, like, why or what changed for me. But I think it was after that week of saying, of cutting down on my drinking, I kind of, thought I, th I think I'm ready for this and 30 days looked like a long time to me like a lifetime looks like a long time anyway but I thought well you're just exploring and experimenting who cares if you fail you can just start again we've always got that you know that fresh clean slate to start again there's new thought coming in all the time so I kind of thought let's approach it from that way um, so I began the experiment and when you start, it, I think it's the first day or one of the first couple of days, there's like a journal that you have to fill out or, you know, you choose to fill out. And she asks questions and stuff for you to answer. And in the first couple of days, it was like, why do you drink? And this was something else that I'd been exploring and chatting to with uh, my sister. And I kind of you know, we talk a lot in the principles and we talk a lot to people on our retreats about the feeling, about the feeling about being anxious and being nervous and having all these feelings that come up for us. And we kind of, um, we teach people, if you like, or show people the way that it's okay to feel whatever you feel and all these feelings, there's something bigger than us that we are okay at our core essence at our core um we are love and we're it doesn't matter that we're having these feelings it's perfectly okay to feel them and still know that there's an okayness underneath that and I think I realized that I thought I saw that <laughs> I thought I really saw that and when I got honest with myself about why I drink I realized that it was things like I feel anxious, I feel nervous, I don't feel relaxed around people and in social situations unless I drink. Um, I feel self-confident, I can't do relationships, I'm not very good at friendships. When I first meet people I'm shy, I'm nervous, I'm scared, you know I've got red cheeks now because I feel all under pressure being on here and stuff. Um, and I thought but I'm constantly telling people that that's okay. So why is it okay for them and not me? And I also realized it was a habit that I drank and it was boredom. It's crazy what goes on in your head, it really is. Like there would be this time in my day where we finish work or what we call work, we finish doing what we're doing. And then before I would start drinking at say about half past five in the evening, it would be, I don't know, say it's four o'clock, half past four. And I think I don't know what to do with myself until like, it's not acceptable to go and just watch TV now or do something to chill out. So what am I gonna do with this time? I just needed that kind of, those couple of hours to just go or <laughs> disappear. And I was just bored and fed up. So even with half the time, it wasn't even 
the drinking I could see that it was going to the shop because we live in the middle of nowhere so there's no shop over the road we have to drive so going to the shop to buy the wine was even taking up that time you know um so it was just all this stuff was raising its head like raising itself to me and and showing itself to me and it interests me and I thought what if you can do these things without drinking what if you can feel okay you can feel anxious and you can feel nervous and you don't need to have a drink like what if and also my like when I started this the idea was I would like to drink normally whatever normally is <laughs> I want to be able to just go and have a couple of glasses of wine here and there and not get absolutely off my face and stuff it it just be nice to be able to do that it was never the plan to stop drinking altogether and I know it's very early days and as I say I've no idea what's going to happen next but quite early on within a couple of weeks it felt so good not drinking and it felt like something huge had shifted in me I have no idea how to explain that I really don't and it doesn't look like it has anything to do with alcohol really <laughs> genuinely it looks like I had some kind of huge insight about it's perfectly okay to be me I am good enough I don't need anything outside of me and all those kinds of things and I think the alcohol just dropped away from realizing that from that realization um I don't really know what else to say now <laughs> so go for it join in or ask me something <laughs> How do you see that break? Because it sounds a little similar to what you went through. Yeah, it's the, but you know, like you were saying, Lucy, it's an individual experience of this. We mm. all have our own separate realities that we experience through our thinking. You yeah. know, so it's it's really interesting to hear your experience of of things tapering off and and kind of just waking up to what's really there. Yeah. Rather than staying in that illusion that that was created you know and that's that's the beauty of this understanding is that it helps us see what's actually in front of us mm. it doesn't mean necessarily that we're going to see it all at once or that we won't see something and then kind of forget about it for a little bit yeah you know we're, mm -hmm. that's part of the the human experience that we're having is that forgetting and then Indeed. we want that spiritual <laughs> experience which is the remembering just how powerful we are, just who and what we actually are at our core. Mm. That's the true spiritual experience, is tapping into that power and, and using it in the only way that it can be used, which is for good. It can't be used any other way. And as it becomes more alive in you, it, it leads you, it, it, it unravels the puzzle. It, it's actually the journey is not to stop drinking. No, nope. <laughs> is is more what Greg is alluding to. This this finding out your own spiritual who am I type of person, and in that feeling of love for yourself, <clears throat> we know that at, even if if you stop drinking or drank at what you felt like, there'd still be lots of other puzzles out there. It's just part of the. <laughs> that uh, this is the way you're playing the game. And, and, I, and I can feel your, your consciousness is starting to see, oh, this puzzle, I'm starting to unravel this puzzle. And this brings out an alive feeling in me because it's already there, that alive feeling. And, and I could feel when I first met Greg, this, that same energy, this, it wasn't relief, it was wisdom. It wasn't, uh, I sh I'm better off now because I'm not drinking. It's I am experiencing who I am with this alive feeling. And that's the power. Drinking is just, well, that's just your habit. I go yeah. to the fridge and eat too much, and then I can't sleep at night. That, does that make any sense when I have done it 50,000 times? No, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But if I'm in an anxious state of mind, I find a way to my way to the fridge. And guess what? Those herrings and ice cream really go well together. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, that type of thing. you know, 
know. So it's just a beautiful puzzle that you're, 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 but the beautiful thing is it's not a game, it's life. When Greg experiences spiritual insight, it, it inspired me. Like I wasn't there when he did, but when he took the same thing I feel with you, it ins you're not only sharing with yourself, you're sharing with all of us, mm. feeling of love. And it's inspirational because it shows that we are not a disease. We do not have to go into the past. We do not have to analyze ego thought type of thing. And the answer is in the unknown. It's unbelievable. It's so simple. And even if you, whatever you experience, you might as well just have a good time with it. <laughs> might as well just enjoy the whole, the whole thing. And I can tell by your face, <laughs> there is a little bit of enjoyment there. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because I think one of the things I'm seeing at the moment is um, how I'd describe it as a mind that abides nowhere. Sorry, I missed that. Can you a mind that? that abides nowhere. Okay. So that's kind of what's coming up for me at the moment, which is kind of like, I guess in a simple way of explaining it is, I don't mind what's happening, like whatever experience is. It's kind of like we have experience, we have an experience, and then I guess within the illusion of life, we choose to suffer or not. And I think suffering is on the table as well as peace. And it's like, what are we prepared to give up for our peace of mind? What are we prepared to, to give up for that? And you can be having any, any experience. And when we realize where it's coming from and we realize who we are, the deeper truth of ourselves, it doesn't bother us in the same way. It's lighter. The experience is lighter. And I think we say down here that life becomes more like a part-time job. <laughs> so we have way too much fun instead, <laughs> which is great and exciting. And yeah, I genuinely think this, that's what's happened to me. I think I've had some kind of shift and in insight that's been going on over the last sort of two or three months. And it's just been exploding and popping like popcorn everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, it is hard to put words on it. I, I don't, it's rare. I talk at our conference and I talk at our retreat a bit, but I don't talk principal stuff much at all. So it's quite new to me. But I'm writing um, my own version of, I'm going to, I'm putting together a 28 day alcohol program for other people. And I am a writer. So it kind of, I find that's a good way of expressing for me. And as Harry said at the beginning, I'm doing some interviews with some awesome people about their journeys and I'm going to pop them into the program as well so that's all exciting and I didn't Very I didn't plan to do that it's just come out of nowhere <laughs> well so. send, send your favorite one to Greg and I and we'll take a look at it and if we like it we'll post it on on our on our site for you okay if, if we like it you know cool. type of, yeah and uh, it's <laughs> sharing <laughs> <laughs> so i just want to remind everybody i just have you muted to keep down on background noise so if you have any questions or comments please feel free to unmute yourself or hit the uh, raise hand feature in the participants tab we would like this to be a, a good group discussion yes <laughs> i don't like being in the spotlight too long so <laughs> <laughs> well, well meta brought up the importance to her of being part of AA and, and the experience. How do you how do you see that type of sharing compared to let's say it part of 3P, part of complementary, or just something a little bit different? <clears throat> um, with AA, I have no idea. I know nothing about AA. I've heard that it's something to do with 12 steps but genuinely I don't know anything really about addiction or alcohol in that way at all I just know 
what I've learned through my understanding of the principles in the last eight years. So I, I don't know, I don't really know what to say to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I well, can't um, comment really. That's a testimony. <laughs> that's a beautiful <laughs> testimony. <laughs> Amanda, did, did, why don't you say a few words with <laughs> Yeah, I will do. Yeah, thanks. Hello, Lucy, and thank Hello, you. Hello, you. I need to message you and book you in. I haven't forgot. Yeah, yeah no problem. So I thought, <laughs> it, I thought it was, there's a few things there that popped, popped out for me that, um, it, isn't that amazing that somebody can be around, like, you know, an understanding for eight years and you never know when it's going to, when, when, when yeah. that starts going to occur, you know? And, and for me, that really is the point of change. Or, or the, or you know, the, the, the cycle breaks. Mm. That's where the cycle kind of breaks is on is on that point of, of insight. And you know, we get to see like it makes total sense to me as well. Like what Harry said, it makes total sense to me that people reach out for stuff and have a drink or go to the mm. fridge and all of that, all of that kind of stuff. That makes sense to me. And then suddenly, there's just something happens. It's that. Thing that just happens or the magic or the magic that's it yeah <laughs> where it doesn't make sense anymore or you yeah it, you know you just like it occurs to you so I don't know if it's occurred to you over the eight years or whether that's ever been a discussion within your family or people have ever mentioned to you that they were a bit concerned about your drinking or that they saw a change yep. <laughs> You know, I'm sure those those kind of conversations occurred, but yep. suddenly you heard it, or suddenly it felt like you were ready to yeah to, to look there, or sudden like it's all this suddenly or out of the blue. Yeah. Like you know what? Like isn't it interesting that before before that was available to you, but before you were whatever caught up, it. yeah, you could see it, or you you knew it all, or it wasn't the right time. Yeah. Or, so you know, it's back to that the thinking behind the drinking right it's, it's <laughs> yeah yeah sounds mm. like the two of you agree with each other <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. don't tell amanda i agree with her <laughs> yeah um lovely to see and it's lovely to hear and it's lovely to for you to be on here sharing but it is you're like i can see what harry's saying it's like you're like a kid who's like <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you, I don't know, mm. won, won the race in the school. It, it, it feels so good to feel alive. That, mm. But it's not alive because we read something in a book. It's an alive feeling. That you, you feel alive. Yeah. And, and when you feel alive, you, you, you start to do things that you enjoy. And then you look oh, back. Oh, God, I know. <laughs> And, and, and then all of a sudden you look back and go, oh, it's two weeks since I've done that or three weeks since I've even thought about that because life takes you that alive feeling. And then, and then it guides you because you say, well, why, why would I throw away something? This alive feeling is the best thing that I've ever, 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 ever experienced. Why would I, why would I do something that takes that away? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so it becomes more like intuition rather than a mental discipline. Like it's not a men I can't do anything mentally. In fact, if I think about not doing things, that's almost a guide to do it. To yeah. Do all, <laughs> uh, I, I, and all I know is, is, is I trust my intuition. I intuitively mm -hmm. navigate around. I understand that it's changing thought. I do understand that, but it's not changing mental thought. That's not what Sid's talking about. It's changing thought and you yeah. just go with that. It's energy and you're just following the energy. And, and what I think Lucy has experienced is a sharing. She's seen that her sharing has grown, which is like sharing love, the love she feels in her own heart and the love she's expressing. And once you share, and you've seen that, Amanda, when you did your show, 90 Days for something, I forget the name of it, but, but you grew because you shared. Yeah. You put your, 
Greg and I continually talk about the people who get the most benefit out of this show is us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, that's what my auntie and sister say all the time because they're constantly talking and sharing and teaching, if you like. They say, we do it because we love it and we get so much from it. I'm like, I know. <laughs> but that's another one of those things, being brave enough to do it, which is, you know, another solid brick wall of mine. <laughs> But um, like Amanda said, it, that it fascinated me as well that, again, we often talk about people that come to the principles with a something, you know, I need to get rid of my anxiety, I need to stop drinking or all these things. And that is what I did. I did the classic thing. I came with, I want to <laughs> X, Y and Z. I want to get rid of this. And it didn't happen. But the amount of things that did fall away and you know, I'm totally, totally grateful for. Um, and then this is just like the cherry on top of the icing of the cake, I guess, <laughs> at the moment, you know, and it is weird because how do you, how do you know, like Amanda said, magic was the word I was thinking of. It's, it's magic. There's this magic that we can't explain, but that's another thing I'm seeing again, the insights just are not stopping. God will not give me a bloody rest at the moment. But the insight, like one of the things at the moment I'm really seeing is this trusting in life. And there's so much less that we have to do. And it just, you just have to show this tiny bit of you up and the rest of it's done. And I'm just seeing it everywhere. It's crazy. <laughs> But it's lovely, <laughs> lovely, crazy. <laughs> That's exactly how Sid felt when he became enlightened. He didn't know what it would be like, but all this magic started to happen. And he just, mm. being an ordinary guy who's enlightened, he, yeah. he, he just, uh, he said, oh my God, look at this. And look what's even, what's next? It's even going to be better and more beautiful. And, yeah. <laughs> and it, it just fascinated uh, his his feeling of how magical life is mm -hmm. not can be is is yeah and and you have stepped into that the drinking has become a asset to you because it took you yeah jump time you jump time so you jump past a whole bunch of people <laughs> because you were drinking and you have to appreciate that. It was totally, yeah. You have to love that, embrace that. The mm. the bullshit that you had <laughs> evaporated when you found that new feeling, and you jumped time, and you stepped into where you are now. And it's not going to stop. You may have trips along the way, <laughs> more and more and more beautiful. And all you have to do is keep sharing. That's all you have to do. Just keep sharing that beautiful feeling and it'll grow and grow and grow. And how will it grow? I don't know. It just, <laughs> just will. We never know. And all we have to do is say, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank mm. you. And thank you, Sydney Banks, for having this experience, which he was fluke to him totally. Yeah. And thanks, the fluke, my experience, fluke, Greg's experience, well, it all designed perfectly scientific. <laughs> <in order. laughs> I had it planned. <laughs> and, you, know, you know, that type. And, 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 and when you say thank you, you're, you're just saying, I'm not thinking. I'm not using my, my mind and my intellect. And that's all I understand is I understand I'm thinking, but I'm really, all I understand is thank you. Thank you. And if I share, I grow. And if I grow, I've got a bigger smile, <laughs> a more loving feeling. And guess what? Our bad habits just drop away innocently. It's just an amazing little journey. Just drops away. How does that happen? How does Greg become a, a better person? It's incredible. Mm. Well, when, when you see 
the truth of of what you've been doing really it's because it, what we're dealing with is subconscious thought patterns mm. that's what any kind of addictive habit is it's a subconscious thought pattern so it's invisible to us we can see the symptoms of it but the actual cause is invisible until it's not and that's what's happening for you suddenly these things are no longer invisible and when you see them you can't help but see through them <laughs> There's no yeah. struggle anymore. There's no bravery needed because they don't exist except that we created them. The only struggle that there is is when we try to hold on to that story that we've created. Mm. When we try to say that, no, but that's me. You know, the, I, I'm a drinker. I go out and I, I you know, oh, I, I, watch, I watch sports, so I have to have a drink when I watch sports or whatever. You know, we come up with the stories behind it. You know, I, I have to have a cigarette when I drink. So I can't yep. <laughs> quit smoking cigarettes until I quit drinking. You know, it's like yep. we combine all these things together and make this chain of stories and they all link together. And it's our willingness to let go of those stories and mm. be separate from them that makes all the difference. And that's what happened for you. I believe in that, in that 30 days is you reached that point where you, you finally became willing to see things differently. So many of us are afraid yeah. to be, wrong yeah <laughs> and being wrong is one of the most yep. beautiful things that can happen <laughs> because it's peace <laughs> and i think that you hit on something there that is so key because <clears throat> you know so many people think rightly or wrongly people think it's difficult and that was my biggest barrier no it's too difficult and i think like you say, when you see something and it makes sense in a different way or it doesn't make sense anymore, it's effortless. I really have found it so far that it's effortless because I don't want to have a drink. I don't want to drink for that feeling or whatever. I see that the natural, genuine feeling that I'm getting without any, you know, like sober kind of thing is so much nicer and so much better and natural high as they say it just is and I couldn't see that like people were telling me but I was like yeah yeah what do you know you know you have you've never people that were telling me that I've never drank and I'm like <clears throat> yeah but you ain't drank a bottle of wine you know get that down your neck and tell me and but it's it, it's been easy it's actually been easy. There's been a couple of times, like we went out for dinner the other night and my friend had wine and it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I thought, no. And I actually tried a non-alcoholic, um, oh, I don't know, crappiest thing, um, ginger beer thing. And it was so nice. And I thought, yeah, that's all I wanted. I wanted the taste of that. That was it. It was fine. But other than that, I'm happy. Like, I'm happy that's it full stop there's no nothing else to say I'm happy <laughs> I just I just haven't found it difficult I haven't and a friend of mine the other day as well said oh I admire your willpower I was like my what my what now <laughs> willpower? <laughs> who's that willpower what's that you know and I, I ordered genuinely... it but it never showed up <laughs> <laughs> bloody Amazon next day delivery what but I, I don't I I don't even really know what willpower is. Genuinely, I don't, I don't know. I just know what my experience was and something inside of me insightfully changed or shift, shifted. And, you know, to start with, it was like, no, I don't want to drink today. And it just continued like that. And when I say like, when I wrote on that post that Harry said, like each day I kind of choose, do I want a drink or not? Like you said, Greg, it's not a conscious choice. I'm not even, I'm not making a decision. It doesn't feel like that to me. Perhaps to start with, it was a bit, oh, oh, oh. Um, but it doesn't feel like that now. It doesn't feel, it just feels like I don't drink. <laughs> well, that's, and I that's don't know beauty, if I'm ever going to. That's the beauty Sorry? of subconscious thought patterns. Yeah. They, they work for us regardless of which kind we create. Yeah. So when we create or an insight can instantly create that new thought pattern. That's, that's the, the crazy great thing about these insights when they pop mm. up. 
But that doesn't mean that when one hasn't popped up, you can't start working toward that. Yeah. If that makes sense. If drinking is a problem in your life and you can find a way to start cutting back a little bit and create that new thought pattern mm. around life without it or life with, with it with a reason or whatever it is that works for you. That's really what's important. It has to work for you. Yes. You know, that's and, okay. and we create those patterns either direction. And the beauty of it is once they become a subconscious thought pattern, they just happen. So yeah, there can be some effort in the beginning. There can be, you know, mm, yeah. if you haven't had the insight around it, still work toward it. You know, I, I haven't won the lottery. I'm still working for, you know, I work for a paycheck, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> I'm not going to sit around waiting to win the lottery. <laughs> in the meantime, I need, I need that cash flow. So it's the same type of thing. I can sit around and wait for insights. And I've talked to people about this where they will literally, they're just sitting in their living room every night waiting for an insight. And I'm like, why aren't you going out living life? The insight yeah. will come when the insight comes. Mm. I believe the only thing that we can do to encourage insights to happen more frequently or, or more readily is just to become more willing to let go of that story we've created. Yeah. Other than that, they're just going to pop up when they do. Yeah. And I've had plenty of them that popped up that I would say, I, you know, I didn't, I don't know, it just came out of absolute nowhere. You know, complete blindsided thing like, wow, I was really doing that? <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's funny sometimes. I'll just stop and laugh. And I swear there, there's got to be a bunch of people that think I should be put away somewhere because I'll just, I'll just <laughs> randomly start laughing. And I can't, I can't explain it to people. <laughs> You know, when something like that happens, it's yep. not like you can put it into words and just talk to a person who doesn't understand that, that sort of thing. You know, so it's, it, it's a, it's a fun process though. And that's the thing, but it, mm. it can involve some pain. Pain is a part of life. And sometimes when old memories and stuff pop up, well, we feel that pain, but it doesn't mean <clears throat> we have to suffer. We can just feel that pain and yeah. see what's there for us. Every time it surfaces is an opportunity to see it differently. If all we do is feel the pain and feel sorry for ourselves and bury it back down, it's just going to keep coming back the exact same every time. Just look at it. If it pops up, it's not about digging into the past. It's about not talking about that. Please don't do that. That's, <clears throat> that's really emotionally harmful at times. But when things pop up, it's for a reason. Something brought it back up into our consciousness. And now that it's conscious, we can see what's going on. And we can change that subconscious thought pattern with it. We can view it differently. And it's the same with anything, whether it be alcohol or drugs or whether it just mm. be, you know, the, the ex-lover that got away. Whatever it is, those thoughts that arise that we don't really care for, that don't make us feel nice, just realize that that's just what it is. It's just passing through. And every time it pops up, we have an opportunity to see it differently from a new light. And to, and to see that um, most of what we're suffering with is a diarrhea of thought, a lot of most of the, uh, the addiction is thought rather than what we, we are telling ourselves it is. I had an experience where I came back from Mexico and I had this incredibly peaceful, beautiful feeling. But I was in a holiday mode. And so I went shopping and I filled my fridge up with cheesecake and cheesecake ice cream and all these treats. And then I went, oh my God, I have to eat all this stuff. And that's my greatest weakness. I got to eat it all right away. And all of a sudden, because I had experienced more silence, I said, wait a sec. That's just, my, that's just what I think. I have, that's my habit. That's what I always do. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's kind of a treat to have all these treats in the fridge. I can just eat them when I want to. <laughs> and that thought had never crossed my mind. And I was no longer a victim of all of that. I have to eat it all at once. 
because I know once I start, Lucy, guaranteed, I'm going to eat it all at once. <laughs> so it, it became a treat, but it was a freedom that was based in silence. It was based in a quieter, <clears throat> quieter feeling. I'd like to read something that I, I'm writing in my book, um, and maybe it will explain as well something. I now include a paraphrase and general theme from one of Sid Bank's early talks and its reaching effects on my life. Professors, teachers, psychiatrists, and psychologists, and a slew of ordinary human beings listen to this common man with an unassuming but comfortable Scottish accent express in the simplest of terms that the world we are living in is an illusion created via thought and the spiritual world is the truth and reality that we are hiding from. <laughs> Were we going to discover this spiritual world which all of us desire? Deep inside our consciousness, which resides in everyone and everywhere else. My direct, my direct experiences expressed through this me message changed my life. It will change yours whether you are addicted or not. I think that's what you experience. No. Yeah. And I think like a couple more things that have just come to me is like it this happens anyway, insight and you know, to human beings. Like Greg said, we're constantly getting insights all the time. And it doesn't mean that this has happened just because I discovered the principles eight years ago. <laughs> it was already happening before that. It's just that now with my understanding of the principles, I know what's going on. And I think, again, like Greg was saying about if you like starting off an insight or um, sort of looking towards it, it, in my experience of that would be to say, it's like the exploration, the getting curious, the questioning, questioning the relationship with alcohol was my thing, or whatever it is for you at the time, it, it is that. That's And that's the part where it isn't all on us. But... Not really, I don't know, maybe I'm saying this wrong. I don't mean like, oh, let's start an insight off, let's, you know. But when we are getting curious and exploring that, it feels like you're more open to things shifting. But they're going to shift anyway, <laughs> whether we are or not. So <laughs> it's kind of paradoxical, I guess. Well, well yeah, if, they, we're not, mm. if we're not aware, we actually yeah. will shift, but we will not have the effect of it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, and we're we're yeah. shifting. And our shifting, I believe, is largely based on the subconscious thought patterns that we have. So if our, mm. if we have those patterns of largely, you know, useful things and we're looking in a better direction, then that's what's going to come up for us. But mm. if we're sticking with all the negative thinking we've been caught in <laughs> for all the years, as we're shifting, we're shifting further into that. And that's why people get farther and farther into that addictive pattern and they start using more and more to try to cover that up because the feelings are getting stronger and stronger as they're shifting. Yeah. But they're not, their focus isn't really on getting better. They don't like where they're at, but they're not focusing on getting better. They're focusing on not being where they are, which are two very different things. If yeah. you're, if you're focusing on not being where you are, then you're actually still focusing on where you're at. Because <laughs> yeah. you're yeah. not giving a new direction. You're just saying, don't look there. Well, you're, your subconscious is like, well, that's all I have. Yeah, where do I go then? Yeah. So when the shifting happens, it goes on, on that sort of pattern. So we can flip that around pretty quickly. And we can have insights regardless. Regardless of any of those patterns, we can have insights yeah. to, to any direction. We'll just talk about that general, like, unfolding, that daily shifting that we all mm. go through. There is a constant regeneration, a rebirth at, at every mm. moment. And at every moment, we can change that. And it doesn't have to be, well, it's Sunday, so I can't really quit today. Because, you know, I want to have a couple of days on the weekend to kind of, you know, get through that. So I'll wait till Friday night. Well, then Friday <laughs> night comes and you're, all your friends are partying and whatever. And then you go out anyway. Next thing you know, it's Sunday. Well, I can't quit on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> you know, yep. and we create that <laughs> pattern. And that's what we keep evolving to over and yep. over and over again. Okay, hey, Amanda, how do you see that subconscious stuff? <laughs> that stuff. 
that, all that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not a word that I use so much. You know, I don't talk about no, it. I, I never use it actually. But no, the, I don't think. So I, I, I don't. But I think that we're all talking about the same thing. And yeah. Uh, what I see is that, um, you know, I love the way Lucy pointed to. Um, to having that shift or, or, or you were all pointing to seeing it's almost like it's almost like we can only you know there's only certain thoughts available to us depending on what kind of that's how I see it you know certain thinking is available to us depending on what kind of level of consciousness we're at if you like yeah. so as we have those shifts different thinking is available to us but I love what Harry Harry you said something there that I that I heard differently which is you kept saying the word think and thank. And, and, and what I saw there was, as we pull the I out of think, thank appears. You know, it's mm -hmm. like the I, which is that me, self, I. We pull that I literally out of the word think. And, and thank just appears. It's like, oh, I love that. <laughs> I see it as a visual as you were saying mm. it. I'm, down, you know when we understand the thinking we naturally start thanking like and and what i see is is that as lucy's telling her story i see that that you know she was kind of caught up in the the i the me that that the the, the i the self the me which i see a lot in addiction is that addiction to self that addiction to yeah and I think as we hang around a little bit more, as Lucy has done with the love of her family, that's all, have all got a deep, you know, deep understanding. Suddenly, you get a glimpse that there's not just this I, that there's this we, or there's this oneness, or there's this mm. love. And 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 suddenly, you're looking at something from a from an observer, or from the witness, or from a different place, from a higher level of consciousness. Suddenly, you see the Lucy character caught up in her insecurities, which is what I think Greg talked about, what kind of patterns or this, you know, the subconscious patterns is, were coming from, from Lucy's insecurities. And that just happens when we're outside of the logic, right? That just happens when, we're, yeah. when we believe, we come back to that one question, where do you think your experience is coming from? Or where do you think your feeling is coming from? What's <laughs> when we think, that our feeling is coming from anything but thought in the moment is we get we get drawn into insecurity, vulnerability, that stuck thinking. That's what I see, Greg. It's the stuckness, the pattern. Yeah. It's the cycle. It's the you know. It's just the drawing of the circle, drawing of the circle, and that's the time. That's the clock. Right? That's our clock of the day, isn't it? Just. <laughs> the circle and what this has done suddenly it pulls us out of that from nowhere to get a glimpse of it from outside so i, I you know i love that i thank you for that harry that uh, <laughs> you can thank it really whoa. yeah but i see the eye in the word think mm. i love the play with words but i see that yeah. so that's how i see it lucy has stepped out of lucy yeah. the lucy mm. story Oh, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Meta, how do you see all of that? Just, just. <laughs> you look too comfy there. I just. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm too comfy. I'm, I'm, I'm actually sick. So, but, um, well, I, I find it's interesting to listen to and, um, I have actually nothing right now to add or something. Um, I should add anything. I, I, I should say, well, I, I was drinking for some years and, and um, I guess the last two or three years I knew I had a problem. I just didn't know where to find a solution. And it wasn't by this I found the solution because this it wasn't come to Denmark. So uh, I found it through AA. Mm. But it took uh, one and a half or two years from uh, when I started to searching, I found something that, that helped me. And um, so. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know what else to say, but that I my experience is, I think I had a lot of experience uh, that I can relate to this way of uh, thinking. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> what I shall call it. Uh, um, uh, throughout my sober years, uh, <clears throat> where I have been fighting different kind of things, but uh, then when I I learned to ask God for help, but, but I think it's as uh, the universal wisdom, uh, and I think you can relate to that mm. uh, uh, very well, and. Um, it was. It had been a very interesting experience uh, to, to, um, yeah, have the results of this. I will say, uh, uh, two hours after I, for for instance, been asking for, uh, begging for something, I I couldn't <coughs> remember why I I was having a problem and what it was about and and there was no problem anymore and and so on and different kind of of. Um, experience so uh, so I feel just uh, somehow I once again feel I I found home even though I, I still need to listen to all your way to try to describe it uh, <laughs> because somehow uh, some places I think yeah one of the things that I enjoyed about Meta was, was we have five people here just for this session. All have had a spiritual experience, all five of us. Meta has had it, she recognized the spiritual power within herself through mm -hmm. going to AA. Mm. And you experienced it, Lucy, in your way, Amanda in yeah. your way. Greg in his way and I in my way. <clears throat> the the only thing that's important is we've had an experience of spiritual dimension <laughs> that has taken us out of our <clears throat> reality and has advanced our, our evolution into mm. the truth. The truth, yeah. which I love this thing. The spiritual world is the truth and reality that we are hiding from. It, it's it's there it's right mm. there. and we're hiding for it. and i love that there's different ways that people can experience that's what makes it so interesting but i can yeah. tell you one thing lucy the depth of what you have experienced whatever the <coughs> path of it is impressive mm. and that feels it <laughs> I think, like, just one quick last thing. <laughs> I don't know what time we finish or what's going on, but <laughs> we're, we're, about, we're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's important to remember that we all have our own wisdom, and it's not about listening to other people. Which isn't to say it's not helpful to listen to other people, but we are our own best teacher and we are our own best guide. We know what's best for us. And like with Mete, it's like, if the AA helped you, great. I have no idea. It's not been my experience. But I don't think there's any right or wrong. There is just wisdom guiding us. And even when we think it isn't, it's always there guiding us. So I think that's just important to, for people to remember that they can trust themselves and they can trust that instinctive feeling, instinctive feeling that we have. Beautiful. <laughs> That's Beautiful. It's a great Thank way to end it. Thank you so much for <laughs> joining us, Lizzie. This has been a, a great conversation. Thank you for today. having me. I've loved yeah. it. <laughs> Glad to have you join us. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again in two weeks.